Break. Uh, thanks. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign. A sign. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign. A sign. I wanna be the greatest Everybody on the face shit I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest I make this Every day and I'm impatient Hoping one day I blow up from the basement Statement The top is so vacant I don't need shit that I think is amazing Waiting for my day when I'm playing Sold out shows for a thousand faces Hey, Give me that crown Get in my way and to be put down It ain't your place All this my town If I want that shit then I'll get it right now I'm losing it, the noose it fits, some loose shit A stupid myth You choose to live or choose to dip You choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift Oh I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? All right, we're back here on the GSMC Baseball Podcast bringing you our second segment. But before we do that, I would like to ask you again to please like and follow the show. Um, make sure your question gets read, gsmcpodcast.net. It really does help me. It really does help everyone a lot. So uh, thank you so much for that. And uh, let's get into our second segment here. Um, so our second segment is going to be about Cactus League and specifically the breakout games happening in MLB Baseball right now. So this was something I had on my radar for a little bit that I thought was really cool. Um, so basically what the breakout games are in baseball right now is that it is a collection of a lot of teams break out players in spring training and top prospects, and they're playing other teams' top prospects. Um, I think it's a really, really cool idea. I think it's a way of getting fans involved in their prospects and just um, teams involved in their prospects as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it's something that's really exciting and something I'm really looking forward to. And, uh, yeah, I just wanted to go over it a little bit. So uh, let's start off with our uh, Cactus League game. So uh, first game we have is Reds-Rangers. Um, so that's a, that's a nice game, you know, two really good young teams, um, that I'm really, that I think are really good and I think are going to be looking forward to watching. So, uh, just going over like pitchers, I think players, I think to watch for the Reds roster first, you have Rhett Loader, um, who is the number two prospect for the Red system according to MLB Pipeline. All this is going to be according to MLB Pipeline. I know a lot of people don't like them, but, uh, I think they're okay and they don't cost money for a subscription. So, uh, going to be using them. And they're not horrible. So, uh, yeah, number 32 prospect in uh, baseball. He was a recent draft pick by them. Um, really excited to watch him. I think he's a really good pitcher for the future and a guy I'm really excited to look forward to if you're a Reds fan. Um, Ty Floyd as well, a guy they picked out of LSU in this upcoming dra- in this year's draft. Um, a guy I wanted the Mets to pick. Um, I, I think he's really good. I think he's going to be up in the big leagues rather soon. I think that's a definitely a guy to watch. I think he has great pure stuff. And I, I just think he's a really good player. Um... Infielders now, you have Edwin Arroyo, who is one of the top prospects in baseball, top 100. Um, yeah, I think he's a great middle infield prospect, um, great hit tool, great fielding, good speed. Um, the Reds have so many of these hybrid kind of, you know, uh, middle infield prospect kind of guys, so uh, not surprising they have more. Um, other than that, you have Cam Collier, who was a recent first-round pick. Um, he's kind of struggled going into the minor leagues, but, you know, still a good player, still a guy I have faith in, so... Uh, not uh not too worried and uh, finally in the outfield one guy i'd look for is hector rodriguez i'm a guy who came over in a small trade with the mets a few years ago and has performed really well since coming over the reds organization um definitely hasn't definitely worked out for the reds and uh he hasn't he isn't ranking that high in their organization but i think he's a guy who could be a good hit in their future and a guy i'd look for uh all right so going to the rangers now um some pitchers i would look for uh they have a lot actually so the first one of course i would look for is brock porter um, he's their top pitching prospect, one of the top pitching prospects in baseball, um, number 88 and will be pipeline for overall prospects. Yeah, great stuff, um, great pitcher. Um, you know, I thought he was going to be one of the uh, prospects involved in the trades last year when they acquired all those guys at the deadline, including Scherzer. So, uh, yeah, but a great pitcher, a guy I'm really looking forward to watching, I think is really good. Um, after that, you, of course, have Jack Leiter, who was the second overall pick a few years ago, has really, really struggled since coming to uh, MLIB. Um, really unprecedented. I don't really remember someone struggling as much as him for where he got drafted. I mean, um, he is just not been that good. I, I was really high on him. I thought he'd be really good, and he just has really, really struggled. So uh, 
maybe he can uh, show everyone he's uh, got he's got old, his old self back in the uh, breakout roster game. So uh, yeah, uh, definitely looking forward to uh, watching him and seeing if he has any improvements on uh, his uh, career. Uh, for infielders now, there's a lot. Um, there's two mainly I want to focus on. Uh, the first one is Sebastian Walcott, uh, number three prospect in the organization, number 71 in MLB. Um, this is a guy I absolutely love. His raw athleticism and tools are insane. Power hitting shortstop, a guy I really, really am high on in the future. Um, I think he's going to be really, really good. I think he'd be up sooner rather than later. I th I'm thinking maybe even early 2026, late 2025. Um, yeah, a guy I really, really like, a guy I'm really high on for the future, and um, I think definitely someone to watch if you want electric athletes. Uh, definitely watch Sebastian Walcott. Um, Justin Fausk is another guy I'd watch. I'm a former top prospect for the Rangers, kind of fell off a little bit. Still a good prospect, still a good player, but at the same time has kind of fallen off from the pedigree that he once had with Texas. Um, but I think maybe he could look to uh, rebound and uh, get his career back on track. Uh, next, we have uh, Aaron Zavala, who's an, uh, not a high prospect, but I like him coming out of the draft. Um, I think he's a guy who's a nice hit tool and uh, could uh, be looking good towards the future. So uh, definitely someone I'd watch the Rangers, even if he isn't the highest on the board or uh, for prospect rankings. Um, uh, so next, we're going to be talking about our next Tactics League game, which is the Battle of Chicago, quote-unquote. Uh, it is the White Sox-Cubs. First, checking out the uh, White Sox roster here. Um, so first we're going to go to pitchers, of course. Uh, the first guy I'll be looking at uh, for uh, them, um, I think I'll be looking at right now Jordan Leisure. Um, they don't have that many top uh, starting pitching prospects, to be honest. Um, they have Kai Bush, but um, I'm not sure why he isn't on the roster. Um, I'm going to check right now, actually. But um, yeah, Mason Leisure right now is the uh, top prospect. He's been... Um, for the top hitting prospect playing in this, he's been um, a top pro. He's been, sorry, I don't know what's going on with me. He's one of their top hitting prospects. Um, he's had a great spring training. I'm um, a guy they think can um, be the closer of the future for the White Sox. So um, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely someone I want to watch. Um, definitely someone I think is going to be really interesting. Um, I can't find why Kai Bush is not on the roster. Um, yeah, um, but. Um, yeah, I could be wrong about that. Um, I'll let you know. But uh, yeah, uh, maybe I'm having a brain fart or something. But uh, Jordan Leisure, definitely someone I would uh, I would watch here. Um, other than that, we're going to go to catchers now. We're going to start off with one of their top prospects in Edward Cuero. Um, Cuero was, was a top Angels prospect for a little while. Um, a guy I thought profiled as the future catcher there before they got Logan O'Hoppy. But he was traded in that disastrous Lucas Giolito Reynaldo Lopez trade for the White Sox for one month of those guys, and they got released so they could save money. Um, but yeah, a guy I really like for the future, Edward Cuero. Um, it made sense. It's, I understand why the Angels gave him up because they have Ohapi, but still, still a great prospect in my opinion. Still a guy to look forward for the future if you're a White Sox fan. Um, could use some help developing a catcher de defensively a little bit, like every young catcher. But I'm not really that worried. So um, yeah, still definitely a. Uh, Definitely looking forward to watching him, and um, I definitely am uh, definitely excited. Um, for infielders, you know who I'm going to talk about. It's Colson Montgomery, top prospect in the White Sox organization. Easy top 10 prospect in baseball. I've mentioned him a lot. I love this guy so much. Sweet swing and shortstop. Um, is really, really good with the bat. Um, he's just an electric athlete, electric guy, and uh, someone I'm really, uh, I'm really looking forward to watching. And um, I think he's going to be really, really good for the future. Um, no real outfield prospects I want to talk about, but uh, yeah, those are the guys for the uh, White Sox organization that I'm uh, I'm looking forward to. Uh, next, we're gonna go to the Cubs. Um, so for the Cubs, um, the first guy I'm gonna be looking at, we're gonna start off with pitchers again, of course. Uh, definitely Kate Horton. Um, I mean, one of the top pitching prospects in baseball. Um, a guy that is really electric with the stuff. Really, really great. Um, he, he's he's really really good. I can't say enough about Kate Horton. But uh, definitely, if you're a Cubs fan or a baseball fan, Caden Horn's a guy to watch. Um, for infielders, I definitely look at Matt Shaw. Um, first round pick recently for them. Um, number five prospect in their organization. Um, number 54 in baseball. A guy I really think is going to be a future part of that team. He's had a great spring and could even make the uh, roster. Um, I doubt it, but you know, you, it's anything can happen, really. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to watching him in the future, and uh, I think he's going to be really, really good. Um, outfielders. I want to mention three guys. First, I'm going to mention Owen K. Uh, Sassy. 
I always pronounce his name wrong, so if I did pronounce it, I apologize. It is K-A-I-S-S-I-E, so uh, let me know if I said that wrong. Um, but yeah, a guy I really like. Um, I think he's a sweet swinging lefty outfielder. Um, I think he's a lot of good speed, a lot of athleticism, good defense as well. So uh, definitely a guy I'm, uh, I'm looking towards as a, a guy to watch in the future, and uh, really excited about him. Uh, Kevin Alcantara as well, another top prospect in the Cubs organization. Um, another guy I'm looking forward to watching. Um, I think he's really, really good. I think he has a lot of good traits. And finally, Brennan Davis for the Cubs, a guy who was a top prospect a long time ago for them, really never found his way and, um, you know, kind of has struggled. But uh, hopefully he can bounce back and um, be really good again. So I'm looking looking forward to that. Uh, next, we have the Battle of the Bay. Going from the Battle of Chicago, we have the Giants and A's. Battle of the Bay for now, I guess, considering uh, A's won't be there for long. But, uh, yeah, talk, uh, talking about the uh, uh, Giants first here. Uh, so, not really many pitchers I want to talk about. I think Karsten Seymour is a guy. Um, he's not bad. Um, also, Joe Whitman. Both guys are okay. Not Don't really stand out, but I like their pure stuff. I like what they've got going for them. So, uh, both, of, both, of those, both of those guys are guys to watch here. Um, no one really in the infield or catcher, but outfield, I want to talk about Bryce Eldridge. Um, Bryce Eldridge, man, oh man, is this guy a stud. I mean, he's super tall, a great hitter. Um, I think a guy to really look forward to, look forward to for the future. Um, a guy I think is super, super good. Um, I think going to be a top prospect um, in baseball for a, look, for, um, a little while now. He's going to be one, sorry. Um, you know, um, so yeah, definitely, uh, definitely looking forward to him and uh, watching him as well. Um, going to the um, A's here. Sorry, we we taking a lot of time on this. I didn't realize how long this would take. So this is going to be a little bit of a long segment. Uh, oops. Uh, so uh, the A's. Yeah. Um, not many people to talk about here. Um, Jacob Wilson, who's their top prospect, he's in there. I'll still talk about him. He's pretty good. Um, good hitting tool. Good guy. They drafted in the first round. Max Muncy as well. Not the Dodgers guy, but their guy. He's also pretty good. Um, yeah. Not much to say about the A's. They're really bad. Not. I'm not gonna not going to talk about them uh, much further after that so uh so yeah um we're going to go to a uh, Padres Mariners here battle of uh, west coast teams um so uh, we're going to go to the uh, Padres first uh they have a lot of guys oh boy wow um so let me take a uh, drink of water here first sorry so uh yeah first guy I want to talk about is Robbie Snelling um, this is a guy that's been in the Padres organization for a little while now. I'm um, a really nice young pitcher they've had. Um, a guy I think has a lot of potential with them. Um, really excited to watch him. Um, nice lefty pitcher. Um, Dylan Lesko, another pitching prospect I really want to watch. Um, a guy who was taken high in the draft, who I thought should have been taken a little higher. I thought they got a steal with him. Um, yeah, super, super athletic. Super, um, just great pitches. Um, great guy looking really looking really much forward to watching him and seeing what he can do drew thorpe as well uh, obviously got him at, in the big soto trade with the yankees so um yeah definitely uh, definitely watching him uh catchers um i mean you have to talk about ethan salas i mean this guy's a phenomenon he's 17 playing in spring training getting hits he could make the roster by next year when he's 18 like that's insane like this is a guy you're gonna hear a lot about in the future going to be a top might be the top prospect in baseball after jackson holiday uh goes to the big leagues um i think he could jump a lot of people so uh yeah absolutely looking forward to watching ethan salas this guy's insane um if you haven't heard of him look him up he's a phenom at, as a teenager um jackson merrill of course talked about him a lot um great shortstop prospect one of the better prospects in baseball um so uh, definitely definitely looking forward to watching him uh they're playing the mariners uh looking out for the mariners here um you know, uh, definitely uh, looking forward to watching Harry Ford, their catcher. Um, you know, nice uh, nice prospect for them. Was a first-round pick a little while ago. Um, definitely a guy to watch. Um, I think he has a lot of great tools going in for him in the future. He also has versatility, so he could play other than catcher if it's needed. Um, yeah, definitely a guy to watch and uh, definitely someone really excited to uh, see how it uh, happens with him. Uh, infielders now, um, we have Colt Young and Colt Emerson. Sorry, Cole Young, not Colt. Not two Colts. That would have been crazy. But, uh, yeah, Cole Young and Colt Emerson, top prospects for the Mariners, both infield prospects. Uh, nice guys who I think have a lot of uh, promise for their future. 
So uh, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely looking forward to uh, watching them and uh, seeing what they can bring for uh, for baseball and um, for their teams as well. Um, we're gonna try to speed through these uh, four quickly here because uh, I didn't realize how long the segment would take, so I apologize. Um, but uh, yeah, um, so we're gonna go. We have the Battle of Ohio now. I like that they're going into the rivalries a little bit um, with you know. Uh, We've had the teams before with uh, White Sox and Cubs. Now we have the Battle of Ohio with Reds and uh, Guardians. Uh, Guardians here, um, not many pros- not many prospects you want to talk about. Really, the only two are, um, first, you have Kyle Manzardo, who I don't need to mention. You guys know how good he is. I mentioned him so much. Lefty bat, lefty first baseman, so, so good. Such a guy I'm really super high on for the future, and I'm really, really excited to watch. Um, I think can be the future uh, power bat for that uh, Guardians team, and I'm really looking forward to it, watching him. Uh, Khalil Watson is another guy I'm really interested to watch as well for the Guardians. Um, this is a guy who was a top uh, pick by the Marlins, um, was traded um, after some not successful seasons there because of character concerns, didn't play very well as well. So, uh, yeah, definitely uh, definitely someone to watch. For the outfield, Chase DeLauder. Um, this is a guy who's come onto a lot of people's radars in the uh, in the past um, in the future, in recently, actually, I should say, um, a guy who hits the ball super far, great swing, top prospect in their organization, um, really, really good, um, and a guy I think any baseball fan should be looking forward to. So uh, Chase DeLauder, definitely a, a guy to watch here. Uh, going to their counterpart, the Reds. Um, oh wait, sorry, I did the Reds. I don't know what's wrong with me. Uh, I'm gonna uh, go back here, but. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess they're playing twice. That's interesting. Um, okay, I didn't realize that. I don't know why I'm just realizing that now. That's my fault. But uh, <laughs> going to a NL West show down here, we have Diamondbacks Rockies. Um, Diamondbacks here, we have um, you know we have a few guys to watch. Really, the main two, uh, the f- main few, I would say right now. First, you have Jordan Lowler, who I've talked about a little bit on this podcast as well as being being a guy that can uh, be a big prospect for the Diamondbacks, be a uh, you know future stud for them. A guy I'm looking forward to seeing can be the future of the shortstop position for the Braves. Um, So, yeah, I mean, the Diamondbacks, sorry, I don't know what's wrong with me right now. But, uh, yeah, definitely a guy I'm looking forward to watching in Jordan Lowler. Um, I think he's going to be super, super good. Top prospect in the league. Um, Tommy Troy as well, another middle infield prospect. Um, A little bit lower rated than uh, Lowler as Lowler's in the top 11. Troy's number 74. So, uh, yeah, but he's still a really good player. Um, really looking forward to watching him. I think he's really good. Um, so someone else to watch if you're a baseball fan. And, of course, we have Drew Jones in the outfield. Another top pick from the uh, from the Diamondbacks. Um, hasn't really performed to his standard so far in the minor leagues. Um, he's also Andrew Jones' kid, which is uh, you have to mention. Um, so, uh, yeah, he's not performed well after being the second overall pick. But uh, maybe in this uh, breakout game he can uh, show what he's made of and show that he is the guy that they drafted second overall. So, uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to uh, watching Drew Jones and uh, seeing if he can come back. Uh, next, we have the Battle of Los Angeles. Um, so, yeah, uh, first we have the Dodgers, who stole Shohei Otani from the team they're playing, the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Uh, sorry for moving around if you're watching on stream. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, the Angels don't have, I mean, this is the Dodgers, sorry. Um, they don't have much to uh, look at here right now. Really, the only guy I would look for big is Dalton Rushing, who's their top prospect. Um, all the prospects have really come up. They've had such a good prospect system for years that it's finally time for them to uh, have a less than ideal one. But it's still it's still pretty good, to be honest. Um, yeah, definitely got to watch. I'm a top catching prospect. One of the better in baseball. Um, nice lefty hitting guy. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely looking forward to watching him. Also, some other guys, not going to go into them much, but uh, Trey Sweeney is someone I would watch. Jackson Ferris as well. Uh, Zaire Hope, those are guys I would watch as well. Um, yeah, uh, going to the Angels now. Um, they they have an okay farm system. It's not great, but it's not, it's not absolutely awful. Um, I mean, the top guy I would watch here is probably Nelson Rada. Uh, he's their he's their top prospect in this game, number two in the organization. Um, yeah, a nice nice hitting outfielder that I think can be a big part of the Angels' future, and a big big part of that nice young hitting core that I do like. So uh, yeah, definitely uh, definitely looking forward to uh, watching Nelson Rada of the Angels' prospects. Um, the Brewers um, final game here, Brewers Royals. 
Um, yeah, uh, I would watch Jacob Mizorowski, um, a great, the top pitching prospect, a great, great guy.